Welcome to today's session. In today's session, we are going to learn the types of respiratory failure and their physiological consequences. In previous session, we learned the structure of the lung and the different cell types in our respiratory system. We know the key function of our respiratory system is gas exchange. So, any injury, infection, disease to the respiratory system will affect oxygen and the carbon dioxide exchange, resulting in respiratory failure. Respiratory failure is a clinical condition happens when the respiratory system fails to maintain its main function, which is its gas exchange, resulting in low level of oxygen with normal or high level of carbon dioxide in the blood. Before we talk about the different types of respiratory failure, let me introduce a very accurate testing method called arterial blood gas test to measure the levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide in arterial blood. Obviously, the test requires a machine and the collection of a small amount of blood from artery, usually it is from the wrist. The test only takes a few minutes to complete, so it is a safe and a simple procedure. The test results give you a lot of information and tell you how well your lungs are able to move oxygen into the blood and remove carbon dioxide from the blood. The values of partial pressure of oxygen and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide have been used to classify type 1 and type 2 respiratory failure. In healthy people, Partial pressure of oxygen ranges from 8 to 100 millimeters of mercury, and the partial pressure of uh, carbon dioxide ranges from 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. So now let's have a look at the types of respiratory failure. Respiratory failure has been classified into four types. Type 1 and type 2 are the most widely accepted classifications. They are classified according to the values of blood gases. For both <coughs> type 1 and type 2, the oxygen pressure is below 60 millimeters of mercury. The difference between type 1 and type 2 is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. In type 1 patients, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide has been set as below 50 millimeters of mercury. In type 2, it is higher than 50. Type 1 is primarily a problem of gas exchange between alveoli and the blood flow in the lung. The problem has a much greater impact on oxygen than carbon dioxide because of the low blood solubility of oxygen than carbon dioxide. Type 2 occurs 
when night reduced air movement in and out of the lung, but gas transfer may not be disrupted. Type 3 results from lung atinectasis. Atinectasis is a complete or partial collapse of the entire lung. It occurs when the alveoli became deflated or filled with alveolar fluid. Type 3 is one of the most common respiratory failure after general anesthesia. So it is also called as perioperative respiratory failure. Type 4 results from hypoperfusion of respiratory muscles when patients were in shock. Respiratory failure could be also divided into acute, chronic, acute, and chronic according to the time it takes to develop. Acute happens within minutes or hours. Usually, the patient has no underlying lung disease, so it is an emergency condition. Chronic occurs over days and usually needs an underlying lung disease. Patients need regular care in order to manage the condition. Acute and chronic usually is a sudden or quick worsening of the respiratory function in someone who already has chronic respiratory failure. So now we know the types of respiratory failure. Let's have a look the physiological consequences of respiratory failure. Respiratory failure is a serious medical condition with the potential fatal outcomes. In UK, one in six deaths are caused by lung diseases. In the United States, respiratory failure affects 360,000 people each year, of which 36% die during hospitalization. Patients with respiratory failure could become very sleepy or lose consciousness. They may have irregular heartbeat, shortness of breath. Respiratory failure could cause permanent damage or scarring to the lung. It may affect the muscles, nerves, bones, or tissue that support the respiratory system. Due to the lack of oxygen, patients may have heart, kidney, and brain damage or develop neurological complications. So in summary for today's session, we learned the types of respiratory failure. Type 1 and type 2 are the most widely accepted classifications. We also briefly touched type 3, type 4, acute and chronic respiratory failure. We talked about the physiological consequences of respiratory failure. In our uh, next session, we will learn what are the causes of respiratory failure, the diagnosis, and the treatment.